Hello and welcome. Recall with single variable quadratic inequalities, we used roots, or critical values, to find intervals on a number line. We then tested the intervals to determine if they were part of the solution or not. We also used a logic-based method for solving that focused on our understanding of how signs work for multiplication. Either way, we were able to find a solution for our inequalities that we could summarize as a graph and in interval notation. For the next couple of episodes, we'll go deeper into using signs to evaluate our solutions. Let's look at our introductory example in a slightly different way. You're familiar with the rules for signs at this point. When multiplying or dividing, the same signs give us positive, and opposite signs are negative. With sign analysis, we forgo calculating actual values. We're only interested in the interval sign. On our number line, we only need the roots or critical values, and when testing the value of an interval, we use the factors for substitution, and evaluate only the sign. In the first interval, for example, we get negative times a negative, which is a positive product. Then negative times positive nets us a negative in the middle interval. And two positives, of course, are positive. Since our inequality is asking for values greater than zero, we only need the positive intervals to show in our graph and to write in interval notation. One more way to look at this process. We'll reverse the inequality sign and add equal to and find our solution using another strategy. Instead of substituting values and testing the intervals, we can use our understanding of each factor to show where it's positive and negative. To start, we know the value x minus 3 is positive when x is greater than 3, and negative for all other values. x plus 2 is positive beyond negative 2, and negative for the rest. If we look only at the signs for the product, we can see once again positive, negative, positive. The inequality is less than or equal to, so we include the roots and only the interval where we have a negative product. As an inequality solution, we write it as x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and x is less than or equal to 3 or, of course, in interval notation. Here's a slightly more challenging example. It's your turn to try. Pause the video and solve using one of the two methods of sign analysis we just introduced. We need to divide through by negative 1 to get rid of the negative sign in front of the 12x squared, and reverse the sign since we're dividing by a negative value. Then, with a bit of trial and error, we come up with these factors. We'll proceed with the testing values method, but just evaluating the signs would be fine too. If we try negative 1 in the first interval, we get negative times negative, so positive values. Substituting 0 in the middle interval gives us a negative times positive, so a negative product and then positive, positive. Our inequality is less than zero, which means only the interval with negative values is part of the solution, giving us this closed interval graph and interval notation. You certainly are seeing that the inequality sign opens up a surprising number of possibilities in mathematics as a whole. Certainly, patterns are emerging that help us connect the pieces. For example, with solving our single variable quadratics, we see this pattern. The first interval is always negative negative, giving us positive. The middle is always negative positive, to be a negative. And the third is always positive. It is the positive intervals that solve for inequalities that are greater than zero. And negative intervals solve when they are less than zero. We'll extend our sign analysis to help us solve some less familiar inequalities in the next episode.